boys, girls, pandas. Conqueror Echo is the answer to playing Echo this durability patch. And in this video, I'm going to analyze two games and show you why and how. If you like this kind of educational content and want to support me, make sure you subscribe, like the video, and if you're a real one, join the Discord. Let's get it! I got three. Let's go. Let's fucking go, bro. I ain't playing around. This is it. This is it. It's time. Let's get it. Okay, guys, as we go into the first clear of game one, I'm going to explain why we picked Conqueror Echo and what its main uses are. So, in my personal opinion, with my many, many, many games on Echo, Echo can either be played as an assassin with usually Dark Harvest, or Echo can be played as what I call a facilitator with Conqueror. As someone who only plays Echo Jungle, I found that there's some team comps that Assassin Echo literally can do nothing against especially Samira, or generally a team where you just can't one-shot anyone. Conqueror is what I found to be the perfect solution, as it allows you to fight those continuous fights with insane sustain, and provides you with the tools to kill tanks and bruisers. The main goal of Conqueror Echo is to stack up your Riftmaker and waste time with your W in Q. As the team fight goes on, you proc your max stacks of Conqueror as well as max stacks of Riftmaker, and you end up having huge sustain with your percentage healing on Conqueror, as well as doing true damage with Riftmaker. Combine this with Red Smite, and you can 1v1 and duel anyone over a sustained fight, and provide huge, huge disruption in any team fights. This might sound really complicated, but these two games should provide clear examples as to how to play it. I'll put the runes that I found to be the best on the screen now. Feel free to pause and copy them down. So, back to the game. On Conqueror Echo, usually you want to six clear twice as soon as possible. This is so we can get our level 6 and we want to scale and get gold as quickly as we physically can. Remember, just because we have Conqueror doesn't mean we don't do high burst damage. We do. Our power spike is just at 2 items rather than at 1 when you're playing Assassin. Now here I know my Jace is probably going to push in, and so I'm pathing topside in order to get a guaranteed scuttle due to topside prior. At this point I see Wukong in the bottom river. This confirms we path from opposite sides. Which is amazing because I really don't want to interact with him pre-level 6. I want to get to my two items as easily and as fast as possible. After Scuttle, I see Talia in a gankable position. And so I try to make something happen. <laughs> Miscalculate my damage and get outplayed. It's unfortunate, but recoverable. Whenever something bad happens in early game after you full clear, don't panic. Your jungle camp's resetting, and so the best thing to do is collect your thoughts, reset, and full clear again. Knowing that me and Wukong started on opposite sides, his top camp should be resetting too, and so he should be top side. I tell my team, and with the most unfortunate timing ever, he appears out of nowhere and ganks bot. He should be top side. We got the zoomies. Let's fucking go. This is a clear example of why Conqueror is so strong. Usually, as Assassin Echo, I would not be able to kill both, as Wukong would outsustain me with his Conquerors. Due to my Conquerors reaching max stacks, however, I was able to heal on the last few autos and survive that engagement. I ensure to push in the wave so it bounces back and puts my bot lane in an advantageous laning position. This is a crucial skill to learn, as a really useful way in order to keep up tempo in EXP during the laning phase as a jungler. I return to my full clear and aim to full clear towards topside again, in order to get to my level 6. While I'm clearing, I realize that top scuttle's coming up, and so I go to see if I can contest it. Alright. This Talia is good too. 
I'm not able to contest, and so I clear top down towards my red respawning. Remember, the key is to stay calm and get to my two items as fast as possible. Conqueror Echo scales really, really well, and so there's no rush to snowball unlike an assassin. This does mean, however, if you fall behind on Conqueror Echo, you fall really behind. And so farming efficiently is the most important and crucial skill you can learn. After finishing my red, I see that bot are again in a position to be ganked. So before I reset and buy items, I see if I can make anything happen. <laughs> the Lulu gets away, and we do a wild goose chase on the Zeri, who completely failed in their escape plan. What the fuck was that, bro? That was actually the most weird strategy I've ever seen in my life. With that priority now guaranteed in bot lane, I ping them to force an early dragon, as Wukong won't be able to contest without considerable risk. After this, notice how I recognize that my camps have respawned and opt to clear again before I back. I do this in order to take the camps off the map as soon as possible and really maximize my tempo against the Wukong. How did that? <laughs> oh shit. Last chance to be anywhere else. One more time. <laughs> Come get me. I'm cold, bro. I'm built different. I'm built fucking different, bro. I get caught, but thanks to Conqueror Echo, I managed to survive due to the healing. This is another clear example as to why Conqueror Echo is so useful into certain matchups. On my respawn, I run straight to my Krugs to reset, and I happen to witness my bot lane absolutely smurfing on the enemy bot. This is huge as I've created that lead, and so I look to push in their turret and take the plates in order to continue the snowball. Oh, she's a straight dead, bro. Look out! After taking the turret and getting the kill, it's important to reset and make sure we don't overstay. So I recall and opt to get magic resist boots before completing my Rift Maker. I do this because the enemy has a lot of really, really cringe CC. And with a Yumi, I want as much survivability as possible and think this will put me in the best position to carry the dragon fights. I clear Raptors in red, and at this point, a crucial part of the game happens. My bot lane throw both of their shutdowns and my Vlad joins in. This is a disgusting throw, and now the game is completely losable. I make sure not to tilt though, and focus on ensuring that I also don't join into this throw. I stay calm and cover mid waves while they respawn. Now, the only thing I'm thinking about right now is Dragon is coming up. We need to make sure we secure this. This means I can't die. And I'm making sure that Twitch, Yumi and Vlad all know from respawn to head straight to the Dragon. Because they got the shutdowns before Dragon fight, it's a harder fight too. And so we really, really need to make sure that we're playing this well and smart. I tried to see if I could make a quick pick on Talia. Unfortunately, I can't, but I trade her out, so she has to recall. This gives us prior, and so I look to see if we can do the dragon. Twitch is still really, really strong, and so this is still really doable. <laughs> oh, I don't know how I feel like this. Luckily I got the dragon. That was actually such that was such a huge throw. As I mentioned in the clip, it was a really big throw. And we trade four kills just for that dragon. Now in these situations, it is worth if we win the third dragon fight. That makes it even more crucial to play even more perfect than I am right now. And ensure that I set my team up to win the third dragon fight and make those four deaths an int's worth. Zoom out. I love it. Look out! Heads up! 
Oh no! No! <laughs> oh, if she stayed on me too, we were fine. At least we trade there. That's fine. That's good. I think? What? I don't know, bro. I don't know. I don't know if that was worth. I don't know. Too many things happened. I can't tell. I mean, I got big from that. I got two kills from that, so it's pretty big. I got the Wukong shutdown too, I think, actually. Yeah, so I got 500. Yeah, yeah, I got gold. I got stonks from that, actually. Pretty good for me. Now, as I mentioned before, the only thing I'm worried about is third dragon. Because I got stonks in that last fight, I am stronger to fight this third dragon. And so, as a team, we need to be really, really careful we don't get picked before it happens. I clear my bot side and look to see if I can either make a pick or get some vision control before the fight starts. I got three. Let's go. Let's fucking go, bro. I ain't playing around. If there are limits, I haven't found them yet. Hey, that's right. Hey, hey, we ain't. Play it around. Yeah. Now this was the most crucial play of the game. It made the four deaths for the second dragon worth because now we're at soul point. Not only that, I got so many stonks from that fight that I'm really, really strong. And as I mentioned before, we have finally done it. We're at our two item power spike. It's time to be a menace. As you can see also in that fight, Conqueror Echo allowed me to trade and be a frontline in that team fight. Wukong wasn't a problem, and I was able to target both tanks and the squishies, even through Shieldbow. Dude, Zeri and Talia are the same champion, fam. Just shooting like do, 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 projectiles fucking 24-7. Now at this point, I'm not trying to chase those two cringe champions, and so I know my team will clean it up. This means that my job is to push in mid, and then initiate the Baron. A lot of mistakes I see in Diamond and below, is that people don't understand when to call for Baron. There's so many games that are thrown because people aren't decisive enough. When we have the team advantage like this, Baron is so free. The more you play, the more you'll realize where those opportunities are available. And that's why I advise playing as much ranked as you do watch it. Bro, I'm coming for that, sir. Now at this point, I don't really need to explain the rest. We have such a huge gold lead and Baron, so we secure the fourth soul and push in with Baron and N. It's really important you recognize why Conqueror is so important in that game. It allowed me to fight and compete with Wukong and Volibear, and I was never worried that I couldn't one-shot anyone because I was focused on sustained fights. One thing to note is when you see a Yumi, Conqueror Echo is really, really good with that as she allows you to survive until your rift maker procs way more consistently and so you become a snowballing monster let's fucking get it bro
Now, when it comes to the second game, it really, really, really shows why Conqueror Echo is so crucial as an OTP. My team had first picked me Echo, and if you look at the enemy team comp, Assassin Echo is physically impossible to do anything with. Conqueror Echo is my only answer and solution to this comp, and you'll see is the reason why we end up winning the game. Oh my god, that team comp. 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 Not gonna lie, like, no flame to my team even. But this looks... <laughs> this looks lost! <laughs> bro, my game to Diamond 4, bro. This is a fucking dire situation. Jesus Christ. This is a Conquer Echo game if I've ever seen one. We're going no skin. We're going no skin. So as a reminder, make sure with Conquer Echo, you're buying Red Smite. I repeat, you're buying Red Smite. Now, you're going to forget and you're going to int games because you don't do this. And that's fine. LP, that loop is only temporary. But remember, if anything from this video, Red Smite on Conqueror Echo. And you do not take Red Smite on Predator Echo. So remember that. With Assassin Blue, Conqueror Red. And again, let's see if you remember. What are we aiming to do? If you said six camp clear, then you're a king slash queen slash whatever you want to be referred to as. And that is the correct answer. We know we're opposite to Diana, so it should be a free six camp into Scuttlecrab. Now again, this is even more crucial into the enemy team this time, as their comp really negates Echo. This guy for sure knows I'm actually just outside. Step right up. Look out, this is how we say hello in Zon. It's not worth, it's not worth. So yeah, we could have tower dive there, probably, and probably one. But if we trade one for one, it's not worth, because he already has the wave, right? So. And I don't trust it with durability. Like, this durability update kind of makes tower diving a lot harder. As I mentioned, it's not really worth risking a tower dive there. We could have probably killed him. But again, this durability patch is cringe, and it's not worth a risk when the wave was pushing into Jax anyway. It's way better to just reset and again, do our two six camp clears and get to level six and two items as soon as physically possible in the safest way possible. I tried to see if we can make something happen top, but it's not gonna happen because Orn's playing pretty smart. And so I help him push in, back off and do scuttle. Now remember, Diana paths opposite to me. So if you've been paying attention, she should be bot side right now. This means she could be doing dragon. So I make sure to ping so my team's aware. If um, Thing takes Dragon here, it's fine too, though. Because we get a uh, Rifless trade. Heads up. An ally has been slain. Step right up. Things aren't going to improve themselves. I'm not successful in killing the Orn, and initially go to reset to clear from bot side up again. However, I still don't know if Diana's on dragon. And so, if she does take dragon, I want to trade and get some deep vision on her jungle. Turns out, Diana did not risk the dragon, however. And she does actually end up showing topside after a reset. Now, although I want to recall, my camps have respawned again. And so I think about clearing to bot side. I'm not too happy about this, however, because Diana did reset and buy items. So she's on the map with more power than me. I also know she's clearing bot side towards the dragon. And so I'm already at this point thinking to turn back and prepare to just do rift immediately. And that's what I end up doing. Now, again, this game might actually look really boring because for most of it, I'm farming. But you have to understand, there's not really much I can do into this team comp. My own is getting diffed by Yasuo. And my bot lane is kind of ungankable. And at this point, my goal is to keep up with Diana's farm and EXP and get to my two items so I can carry in the late game fights. Remember, I'm a facilitator and that means we're carrying in a different way. My aim is to carry team fights with my W and allow Lucian, Ash and Jax to do their thing. Pop, 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 pop. Right oh Yoren is sleeping, bro. 
While this happens, Jax makes a huge shutdown on Yasuo in bot lane. This is huge and a comeback moment for us. And my job is merely to cover mid and ensure they can't punish us for that. Again, I'm farming wherever I can and ensuring I scale and keep up with Diana, even though she's more fed. It's fine to not have kills as a jungler. I know my role and it's not to be the main hyper carry. Now again, mainly it's just farming here, but at this point I know Dragon's coming up. And so while I do want to clear my Gromp, I need to make sure that I get vision deep in the enemy jungle. My bot lane's strong, and so maybe we can make something happen. While doing this, I notice that Karma's in a really nice position to get tower dive. Never falter. Uh, uh, has been slain. Execute nice. Second dragon's coming up, and I want to see if we can fight for this. While I'm not the strongest, my Lucian and Ash are pretty strong, as well as my Jax. And if I land a good W, it could change everything. You never see this coming. Come get oh, fuck. Think fast. <laughs> Catch. Oh, what the Look fuck? If there are limits, I haven't found them yet. Okay. Looks like we're not strong enough to fight this dragon, apparently. I'm gonna mute, 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 I'm gonna mute. I don't wanna hear it. I had no R and I got chunked, so I get what he wanted from me, but I actually had no CDs. I literally just used everything. Oh, this Lucian's kind of nasty with it. That was sexy, bro. This Lucian's playing like some main character. This Yone is really, really, really problematic. If this Yone actually went even, like this game's so one to. It's really sad. Now again, we enter back into Farming Simulator. While that play didn't go great for us, Lucian did get the kill, and this game is still winnable. As Conqueror Echo, you scale later and you should never give up. The main goal is to keep up with Diana as much as I can and hold on by taking whatever I literally can get my hands on. They make a play in bot, and so like a good jungler, I play for the opposite side of the map, which means Rift Herald. Things like this are so important, and are the reason that we ended up coming back in this game. Stay cool and focus on what you can do, not what's already happened. I don't trust this guy. I don't trust Yon. Oh, maybe. Let's make them notice. Look out! It's a one more time. Patience. Boom! Look at that. Just like that, we're even again. And if not ahead. On this back is huge, I have so much gold, and it's because we stayed calm, collected, and played Conqueror. Look at how I was able to sustain in those engagements, and therefore allow my team to play around me and soak up damage in order to get those kills and picks. Oh, that's not good. It's good, it's good, it's good, it's good. Big trade, big trade. Alright, All right, good job. Having SO die here is actually really huge because it means that we can fight for Dragon. I didn't have R. I thought I had R. Oh, they tried to Drag, 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 drag. 
They can, they can, they can. Dan is dead. Big! If we get this strike, it's actually so big. Please? Nice! Huge, 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 huge. Huge. Well played, well played. Nice, 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 nice. I can carry this for sure. I'm just going to be such a... I mean, not carry with damage, but I'll carry in terms of what I'm doing in team fights. Just watch. It's actually going to be crazy. Now, at this point, we have a man advantage. In 9 times out of 10, we should Baron here. Although Dian is up and has Smite, 5 man versus 3 forces them to fight us. And again, can make us enhance our gold lead. Back to going forward. Oh, Every second matters. Heads up! Do all your Look out! You have stayed up right up. Nailed it. Big. Your team has destroyed a turret. Yes, through. Yes, through. Go! Your team has destroyed a turret. All out of warning. Come get me. Think fast. Look out. That fight was possibly one of the most perfect ways to show why Conquer Echo is so strong. You can go back and watch how much sustain I get from Orn and Diana. You play like an AP bruiser in a way. And your W is so annoying for the enemy to play around and can cause huge team fight swinging moments. Now here, after a bit of back and forth, Diana gets traded for Ash. This is a huge opportunity to do Baron here. And again, this is something you need to practice, guys. Nice. Stonks. Telling you, bro. You don't have to have the most kills to carry. Look out! Time is not on your side. Come get me. Go! One more time. Look out! Cat! Welcome to Zon! Go! I will carry this game, bro. Now, Dragon's coming up again, and if we get this, we have end potential. Slow, 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 slow. Now, at this point, we have Baron, Dragon, and I'm insanely strong, and so I kind of want to limit test. Again, I'm a facilitator, so I'm not really looking to kill anyone, but if they send resources for me, I imagine my team will clean up. However, I don't really pay attention to the map, and they're in very, very awkward position. We should trade, we should trade, no? My bad then, I guess. I thought my team was strong enough to trade. I thought my team was strong enough to trade. I, I have to be again, I have to be again, I have to be again. I don't want to see the flame. I don't want to see the flame, I fucked up. Dude, Death Dance is such a broken item! Fuck. Uh, that's a huge throw.
focus. One mess up. The game's not done yet. I think if, if it was actually a good play, it was actually a good play. If Death Dance wasn't a thing. Now, although my play was incredibly int, at the same time, it really wasn't that bad if my teammates played that a bit better. However, that's no excuse, and we could have really pushed in minions with Baron and done it in a much safer way. So, so this was incredibly useful to watch back and take notes on. Now, the rest of the game is more teamfight focused, and so it doesn't really require my commentary. I'll just go from teamfight to teamfight in key moments and let you guys experience it as it really should be experienced. Enjoy. I got it! Let's go! That's it, bro! That's it! Things aren't gonna improve themselves. Let's go, bro! Let's fucking go! Let's Fucking go. I didn't want to smite this. Might be a misplay. It's gonna be close. No, 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 Nice, he lived. No, he doesn't. The Cesar is actually nuts, bro. End potential, end potential. This Yasuo is insane, bro. Dude, I love this game, bro. This game is so hype. Lucian's insane. Yasuo is insane. Jax is insane. This Ash is insane. This uh, fucking, bro. Let's go. This Yasuo is genuinely 1v9. This is a hype game. Anyone could win. We have soul point though. <laughs> we ain't done yet. I'm making diamond promos. I swear. I swear. I Thing has fucking this again. This is it, this is it. It's time. Nothing 
That's it! That's it! Let's fucking go, bro! Let's fucking go! Look out! <laughs> Let's go! Let's go!